Hey guys, and welcome to another Nomad Team Game audio commentary. This is a fun game that I played yesterday that I wanted to do an audio commentary of. It's a bit different, again, to the last few audio commentaries that I did. And this is the first 4 versus 4 audio commentary that I'm going to be doing. So, in this game, I'm playing as the... I guess that's pink Japanese. And my teammates are Classic Matters as the Spanish, playing in red. Classic Matters was featured in my last audio commentary where I played a 3v3 as the Vietnamese. And we've also got Mike Oxmall, also known as Gerald, playing the Yellow Turks. And to round it out, we have That's A Lot Of Scalps playing as the Orange Vikings, also known as Mitch. It's just much easier to refer to the players as how they're actually referred to when we're playing. So in this game, we are actually playing against another four stack of players. And the, the, how I found that out is I looked up the the game um, stats on one of the AOE stat sites and check the player history. And then I could see that these four players regularly play together as well. So I think in some of the other audio commentaries that I've done, we, we're playing against two people that are completely unknown to each other and they're probably not on voice chat. And obviously being on voice chat with the people you're playing with gives you an inherent advantage. So in this game, it's a quite a good one in the sense that we're playing against an evenly matched team. So four people playing together. The ELOs are roughly the same. Um, I think the other team actually ended up having a higher ELO than us. Um, my ELO is probably not representative of um, my ELO on the map Nomad specifically because it's my favorite map of the, the main four maps that get played in team games. Um, and like sometimes when I play other maps um, I might lose the ones that I'm not focusing on as much and then get the wins on Nomad. So in this particular game, um, well, with, with my group of friends, we don't tend to have, like particularly myself, I tend to change my civilizations almost every game because I find it fun to try different things. I, I'm not one of those people that likes to do the same thing over and over again in Age of Empires 2 at least. And I guess in most games that I play, I like to change it up a bit, particularly in multiplayer. So, um, I didn't have. I was the last person to pick my civilization when we were in. We got the map and we had to choose our civilizations. Um, Matters usually plays Spanish on Nomad. He sort of has a couple of civs that he likes to play on different maps and just sticks to those. So I think he picked his straight away. Um, Gerald, who's playing as the Turks, he spent pretty much most of the last. Um, patch where the Portuguese got the berry bonus doing organ gun drops on Nomad. Um, once he started doing that, he was um, doing quite well with it, obviously. So now that the organ gun's building damage has been nerfed, um, I suggested that he try the Turks on Nomad because that's probably the closest thing to the same play style that he can he can use. And then um, Mitch was the, the third last. He was the the second last person to pick his sieve, and he chose the Vikings. I think he was initially going to play the Franks, and I was going to play like Dravidians or something. But then he changed it to Vikings, and so I thought um, I'd go the Japanese because I've only played the Japanese once in no a Nomad team game before, and I completely Titaniced that game. It was a two versus two, so I wanted to try it again because Japanese have got some quite good bonuses for early game on Nomad. Um, if you if I open up the tech tree here, they've got um, double hit point fishing ships. So that means that if an enemy player gets a jump on you in Feudal Age, it just takes so much longer to kill your fish, particularly if it's fire ships. Um, actually the same as galleys as well. They get a work rate bonus so that you get like food coming in faster in Dark and Feudal Age. And then their um, resource drop off points uh, like the mining camps, lumber camps, and mill only costs half of the cost. So it's very easy to make a lumber camp early uh, and make a mill early. It's very flexible in the start of Nomad because you the, you get you get that bonus. You can get the extra fishing ships out and get your drop-off points down. You can even make like two mills early on like a berries and a, a, a patch of a hunt or something like that. Um, and it's a very nice early game bonus for like water maps or hybrid maps in general. So um, big four versus four games are pretty chaotic. There's usually a lot going on and my point of view is not necessarily gonna tell the whole story of the game. 
So at some points, I'm probably going to go... I've wa already watched the replay back a couple of times. I'm, so I've got... I know like there's a few things that I probably need to jump out of my point of view and just sort of show what else is happening in the map. And um, I've done the... I'm doing this unrehearsed just in one take. So hopefully I'll be able to pick those points up correctly in the replay and then um, show you guys like what's happening because I sort of end up doing something a bit different to the other players in the late game or, or like I don't do yeah I guess so I guess that's the correct way of saying it like I have I sort of go off and do something on my own while the other guys are doing something all right so I'm going to turn the fog of war back on and jump to my view lock and I'm going to press play so um, my first three villages they actually all spawn quite close together sorry for the pause again so I've got a very small v shape I've got a villager here a villager here and a villager here. Now I could use either of these two villages to make a dock because they're the ones closest to the shore and I can go sort of anywhere in this direction. I'm just gonna turn the view lock back on, but at the moment I just wanna find a town center location to start with. Um, and then I can send one of the villages over to the shore. So I'm using all the villages to try and find a wood line. I found one here, but there's a bloody hill. And I'm trying to like mash down a spot to place the town center but I end up having to kind of move around a bit before I find a spot, and then we go. Still not bad, like, if you can get the town center down a bit quickly, it's a little bit better. I found one of Green's houses, so I had a suspicion that he possibly could have been right next to me, and I flagged the house, and I think maybe one of the other players had an idea of where one of the other enemy town centers was. I think possibly Mitch, over on the other side of the map as Vikings, might have seen the direction that someone was going. So within my line of sight, I can see a berry patch and a stone hunt. I TC right on a gold by accident. And I'm getting my dock up and I'm just checking where all the all of my allies are and we're trying to communicate about our early game strategy. So one of the things that it's good to do in a 4v4 is you need to try and find the enemy TC locations and dock locations. This is the same in two versus two and three versus three, but it's probably more important in four versus four to have an idea where, oh, there we go. So there's another enemy there. I assume that was green. It's it's really important to, to make sure that you try and find the enemy town center locations, because if you forget to scout someone, you can get a nasty surprise. So, so you can, you know, particularly when the game gets so messy, there's so much going on. If there's, if there's a player just sitting there in the unexplored fog of war, for like 20 minutes, they can come out and castle drop you out of the blue while you're doing something else, and then you've got no response. So with my sheep, I've spotted I spotted two boars, but I spotted one close to that enemy treaty ring. So I'm like, right, I'm gonna go and try and get that boar in and deny them of that boar. So instead of going for the one to the right of screen, I'm gonna go for the one to the south. I probably could have pulled a villager from the wood line to go forward earlier, and I'm just sending the sheep around to have a look as well just to clear out some of the fog of war. So the boar has disappeared. So I assumed that it was just walking around in the black down in the fog of war here. Looking for the boar, looking for the boar. Where is it? Oh shit, there's an enemy town center. And I wasn't good enough with my micro. I uh, needed to move to the side of the TC and I lost that villager. So already I've kind of titanic my start a little bit. It's quite bad losing your vill early on and I was a bit late getting the fishing ship um, onto a, I haven't even got it working yet on a deep fish because I'm like shit I need to I need to get some food under my TC so I bring in that boar and then I've got to find a uh, deep fish there's one there and straight away I've seen a fishing ship from another player so that means there's an enemy dock right next to me which is not a good thing particularly because I've up, I'm off to such a bad start um, and that player's Marlians as well Marlians they don't get uh, they do get a, a Dark Age bonus in that they save wood, so they can get the fishing ships out a lot quicker, and they, they'll have probably a, a fishing ship lead over me, even though I get some good wood savings as well. Also got myself towers because my sort of flow in, in Dark Age has already been thrown off, and yet this is what you get at 1100 to 1200 ELO. <laughs> you get some mistakes like this. I think in... So if, uh, this would be the 4-3 play I've posted so far. I think only in my first game did I have like a, a very smooth Dark Age. The other ones I've gotten housed um, quite a few times. So, so now that I've seen the enemy dock, I'm going to send my villager to try and wall in the vill. 
And there's the enemy villager. Yep. And I get the wall off successfully. He hasn't noticed. So that's good. So I'm going to be um, slowing down that villager's ability to um, to get multiple docks up. I haven't gone for multiple layers of walls just yet because I, I was like, I need to. I'm I'm behind because I've made some mistakes in Dark Age. I need to get that villager back on the shorefish to start getting the food in because I need to get get a good uptime because I've got a player right next to me. If my uptime is too slow, they're going to have fire ships out faster than me, and I'm going to lose. Um, I'm going to start losing water. So move my fishing ships to the other side, the deep fish to the left of that um, grey dock. And I'm, I've had to use my sheep under my town centre because I just need to get the food in. And I'm going to mill these ostrich. Um, normally I just long distance them, but because Japanese get the um, cheaper mills, I thought it was worth putting one up. And oh, now I, I'm, I'm a bit screwed here. I've got two enemy docks directly near me. This is really bad. This is not what I was ho hoping for because I was going to be playing early water. Uh, the strategy that I was talking to with the guys was I was going to go early water long enough for the Viking player to get to longboats and then he was going to take over for me and I was going to transition to land. So I'm, I was going to try and wall in Teal and go for the, the Viper masterpiece, but he noticed that I was coming for him. But I did get the first hit on his bill, and I'm forcing him to play defensive and go wall himself in. So rather than trying to wall in Grey or commit to trying to um, wall in Teal's bill, I thought I need to move my villager and get a dock up in a different spot because I can't build a second dock right near those docks. That dock's going to go down at some point. I need to go and dock somewhere else. And so I'm going to send my villager to the north and try and find another spot. And now I've gotten housed again. My eco is a little bit of a mess. Um, but And I'm even sending a second villager to the north as well um, to get... Uh, just faster, a faster build speed on the second dock. I can put those two villages onto a shorefish to get a little bit faster food. And then I've got two villages up there. I can kind of, you know, build more docks and more houses and stuff. And they can, they can do things up on that side of the map. Um, so we have now discovered, as I can see in the fog of war, that blue is the player next to us. So I'm just going to do a quick pause here and take the view lock off. So... Well, I actually, I already knew that, so that's actually blue there. Not 100% sure whether green is there too. Um, we've got Classic Matters over here. We've got Mike Oxmall down here. And unfortunately, Mitch is on the other side of the map to us. I think, I don't know if we've got an idea where the other players are just yet. Um, so I know that there's two enemy docks over here. And Gerald's going to be going for a castle drop. He's got... He's right on stone. He's had some bores. Pretty safe TC location. So yeah, we've got, we got the score lead at the moment. It's looking pretty good. And I'm just moving over here with my bills just to sort of give you a bit of a look at how the map's going at the moment. And my allies' docks are all over the other side of the map to me. So I, I'm going to be in a little bit of trouble. Gerald's not going to be going for um, any ships. He usually doesn't do that when he's going castle drop strategy. That's not a very good dock location. Um, in the inlet there, very far away from the deep fish. His would have been better off probably being there or somewhere over here. And then Mitch and Matters have got a nice dock position over here. It, they can sort of reinforce each other if they get attacked by enemy ships. And it's also quite safe for them um, in early feudal. Back to my view lock. So now um, that all the deep fish near my dock have been cleared out, I'm going to migrate my fish over to the north. And I see that the Persian players got a lot of fishing ships working um, so I know that that's a spot that I'm going to need to hit if I get the chance and now I'm going to try and build a mill over near that hunt over there just to try and get that extra food in I'm very food heavy at the moment I'm just about to click up to feudal age I just need to force drop a bit on the, the sheep under my TC and now I need to go to gold and get more villages on wood so I think where I built that dock location, I couldn't actually fit. Oh no, the, the villagers do fit. There we go. That's all right. So I've docked in a good inlet there. It's um, a nice covert location. It would be difficult for the enemy team 
to find my dock there if they're circling around the outside of the map with galleys or something like that. So it'll give me a bit of time to sort of get a couple of docks going in that spot and get some fire ships out onto the enemy docks that are to the right of where I've redocked. And I'm building an outpost there just to, just in case there's, you know, enemy buildings quite close to my base, you know, so I'm going to build some feudal military or something like that. It is possible that the Burmese could do man-at-arms. You don't usually see that. They're usually going to go for a castle drop in Arambai. So yeah, the two vills here allows me to put one on shorefish and could send the other villager out to find another dock location. There's another shorefish there, so I'm going to I'm going to dock that. So that'll be my third dock up. Now in my very first replay that I posted to YouTube, I had um, docks in split locations, and I didn't really. I wasn't able to win water with that strategy. The dock locations were too far away, and the way that I played it was a little bit wrong. And I'm, I was hope with that experience in that game, this is kind of a similar situation. I was hoping I could do a better job at feudal navy in this game. So I'm able to get a couple of fire ships out. I'm the third player up to feudal age and the first on my team. Um, on Nomad, I am usually one of the players that hits up times the best in our group um, particularly like going feudal water I'm usually the first player up to feudal age and I'm usually the first player to imperial age as well recently I haven't been going for fast castles on nomad most of the time in the big games like in um, in 4v4s because I'm, I'm usually usually got like a hybrid role doing some navy um, because I'm sort of one of the more experienced water players in this game. All right, so Gray has got some fire ships onto my hunt villages. Unfortunately, the um, the ostrich were quite close to the shore, so I'm just um, idling his fish a little bit, and I'm going to try and kill that fire ship. Uh, he's microing it though. I've got to focus on some other things. Getting town watch in. He's sort of using his fishing ships as a bit of a, a shield. I'm going to lose that fire ship though. I'm trying to micro it away and now I can see I've got both players on either side of me coming at me on fire, on fire ships. I'm just going to keep building fire ships out of this dock just to cause some interference. I know I'm going to lose the ships but it's just buying me a bit of time to mass on the other side of them so I can come in and hit them from, from, from the left. And then here I'm putting a lot of villages on gold because I thought I can just build a market and I can buy some resources if I need to. So yeah, now I'm idling Teal's fish, just to try and slow him down a little bit. I'm not going to commit the fire ships though, because they, they've got two, two player production of fire ships. So I need to be defensive with mine. I need to protect my fish, because I need those to get a good castle age time. And I just need to hold long enough for my Viking ally to sweep the seas, because he he's not... Um, not quite as strong at probably the economy in Nomad and economy in general, so I just need to wait for him to um, to get online and come and, and come and take over. And I think Matters um, also ended up going fire ships as well. I was kind of surprised that he did that, but he he's sort of been playing Malay and um, even Britons, and and he's a player that like was very resistant to playing ships because he kind of some some players don't like water because they don't understand how it works so how how water um kind of works is fire ships are kind of like water knights you can kind of just patrol in and leave them you do have to micro in fire galley versus fire galley fights you have to focus fire you've got to micro back your weak ones like that's pretty standard but you can just kind of patrol and you don't have to worry too much about it whereas if you're playing galleys it's more like archers so you've got to you've got to control your ships you've got to micro back if fire ships are going at you you've got to weave left and right if you're fighting other galleys fire ships just don't take the same level of micro management as galleys do particularly if it's like a galley versus fire galley fight the the galley player has to use a lot more apm um and yet yeah, matters um he, he was sort of struggling a little bit on Nomad. He was getting probably some unlucky town center location spots and getting getting castle dropped and getting killed in feudal by players being aggressive. And then I suggested to him, why don't you try Malay? Because the, the age up, um, the faster age up time will help him get to feudal age to defend himself and also be able to put fire ships out. 
and then he started giving that a go and he enjoyed it so after that he's been one of our go-to players to play like the water role he's probably not the strongest player um in our group like i think there's maybe two or three other players that are probably better at that role than he is at least on nomad but it allows the flexibility in the group so if he's doing that frees up the other players to do something else and he can also do like feudal fire ships and as the spanish go for like a later conquistador play as well so spanish are quite flexible in that um, particularly with the the gold from technologies bonus because you can you can get you know a couple of feudal age upgrades and get a couple extra fire ships out so I'm, I'm almost got Castle Age Res here. I've got a couple of demo ships and I just patrolled them in. So I'm going to take the view lock off because I don't actually think I see what they hit. Okay. Yeah, so that was actually quite good. So I took out, I took out, it was kind of like two for three with those two demos. So that was quite nice. Gerald is the first player up to you. Castle Age is the Turks and he's going to be doing a castle drop. Again, I'm just holding the position here because I know that uh, Grey and Teal, they are to the right of me. And then I'm just going to quickly take the... I'm going to pause the game, take the view lock off for a second and just have a look at what's going on. So Gerald is moving his bills to come and castle drop. We've got Matters who has fire ships on Blue's dock. Just going to take the Fog of War off. Blue has gone galleys. So I think he's been defending against Matters here. He's also got a couple of galleys over here because I've been harassing them on this side. And Mitch is starting to go galleys now as well. So... It's nearly nearly 20 minutes. He's still not quite ready, but he's getting there. So I'm just going to leave the view lock off for a little bit, and we're just going to have a look at what's going on. I mean, yeah, I've got some fire ships over here. So I've, I'm doing pretty good one versus two on water, but I need to go back again because I need to preserve my numbers. So I'm, I've only got those two ships at the moment. I need to go back to the reinforcements. So here comes the castle drop from Gerald. Quite aggressive. Um, just going to turn the War back on. He's gone for the double gates and that castle with fletching, I think he just researched it, ranges that TC. So that's quite quite a good one. He's got a light cab there. I think he ends up getting that up without a problem. Um, Blue is not microing his galley, so he would be beating matters here if he was, but um, he's probably a bit busy with Gerald's castle drop, so that's giving matters the advantage here to take out those galleys. And again, I'm just playing defensive. I conned that I was 3v1 on water over here. And then Mitch has got galleys on greens fish. So currently we're doing quite a good job on water. I'm holding one versus two. Matters is kind of 1v1ing blue. And Mitch is taking out greens fish, who I don't think committed anything to it. So now I'm going to be pretty slow to castle edge. Again, the players that commit to water are generally slower. There can be cases where the, the galley players are faster because... The other team isn't committing to water, so you're not having to continue to make ships. You make a few, and then you're like, right, I've got the Castle AG I'm going to go up. I'm grabbing the stone mining upgrade because blue's right next to me, so I'm going to go a defensive castle. I can see there's some buildings there. Jared's got his castle drop up on blue, and I'm starting to commit villagers to stone. I'm pulling a lot of villagers because I want to get a castle up to the left of my TC. I can potentially castle drop one of blue's town centers as well. Again, Blue seems very distracted, so it's pretty easy to kill his galleys. I've got Horse Collar coming in to make some farms. Um, so I'm going to start with the mill, the amount of mills that I've got around. I can, I can get some farms up pretty good. I should, I could have probably gone more fishing ships, but I, I wasn't 100% sure like whether my fish eco was going to stay alive. It really just depends on um, how much the enemy team's committing to water. And again, Mitch hasn't come over yet to reinforce me. He's on his way now. I can see him, his units moving um, to, to my side on the map. And now I don't have the, the war galley upgrade, so I'm still on the Feudal Age um, fire galleys. And I'm just trying to balance my resources to get that upgrade in, just to get that extra bit of survivability. Once I get that in, I need to do it well, I want to do a castle drop on blue, and then I want to expand my food eco. So get some extra farms, get some extra town centers going. So my dock is being um, killed by the uh, teal fire ships, and the last player to feudal age is grey, uh, probably because he was committing to water as well, probably the most from their team. Um, so I can hear something going on to the left of me. I think Blue's gone defensive monks as Burmese. It's 
good that we haven't had Aaron by killing my villagers. So Gerald's done a good job to sort of neutralize blue here. And I'm going to get a nice castle drop up. My outpost is giving me vision that there's villagers on that stone. And I place it so that the castle is within range of blue's town center, but just probably outside of blue's line of sight if he doesn't have town watch. So I commit a lot of villagers to get it up. There's no way that he's going to be able to stop that. I'm getting fletching. Uh, just because it gives me a little bit of extra range and there's the po always the possibility as Japanese that I'm going to be making some ranged units later in the game. I might have to make arbalists or skirmishes or something like that. Floating lots of wood at the moment, but um, I'm, I'm going to start spending that in a little bit. I was a little bit worried that those knights are actually enemy knights. Uh, and then I saw that they were they were Gerald's knights. So yep, going to build out a town center and start throwing down some farms. And I'm going to start queuing up some samurai. That's just because that's our only military land production building that I've got. The castle samurai have been made a little bit cheaper recently. They've got pretty good uh, attack damage against buildings. I'm just going to queue a few of them in there just to put some pressure on blues production buildings and potentially get some villager kills. So with my last fire ships, I'm just trying to be annoying. I can see on the minimap that Mitch is coming over with his longboats and war galleys to help me clear up. Just gonna try and take out as many ships as I can just to delay. And I think I just end up moving those to the corner of the map. Just so I'm pulling these fire ships away from my fish just so they stay alive. Back to my view lock. And I'm just going to start expanding my food eco, grabbing the armor upgrade for my samurai, and I'm queuing up some extra fishing ships. There we go, I'm just going to throw those um, fire galleys away. Mitch is here now, so I, I'm going to transition off water and onto land. So now we can sort of, I'm just going to take, while I'm just doing some macro, I'm just going to take a look at the map. So now we've discovered that teal is over here, right next to Mitch. He's got um, an outpost up, and green is also probably over here somewhere. Yep, there's a castle. He's got some Chuko New going, and Mitch has smartly posted an outpost there. Gray ends up being down here. I think, I'm not sure what scouted him, possibly a scout cab from one of our players. So now we know where all the enemy is. We're winning water, we're in a good spot. And Mitch's score is flying to the top because of his Navy score. Um, we have killed a couple of town centers from blue. Blue's score has gone below 2,000, so we're doing a good job at neutralizing him from the game. Again, I'm just getting in wheelbarrow. I need to just start getting my economy going, getting my villager numbers up, and just booming up so I can get some military going in late castle age, early imperial age. I, with my dock villages, I ended up building, building this lumber camp over to the top, and I could see that Blue's migrated his villages over there. So I'm like, right, okay, so that's where you're going. I'm going to pull a couple of my samurai over in that direction and see if I can, can start mopping up some of your villages. And I'm just looking around, seeing where I can place another town center. So I've got two town centers. I need to actually, I've, got th I've built the third one quite close to my second one. And I think I'm going for like four or five town centers in this game. Not necessarily because I needed them for production, but it, just because it was um, more efficient to make a town center than like a mill or a lumber camp or something. So I'm sending a few samurai over to kill more of Blue's villages. And I've got the, both the wood upgrades. I haven't got the gold upgrade at this stage because my gold count's quite high. So I don't really need it. Um, I mostly just need to get more food and then I'll be able to go Imperial Age. So there we go. Blue has town centered again over towards the north edge of the map. So I'm like, okay, I've got almost got enough stone for another castle. I'm going to go and build a castle over there. Blue is trying to build a castle next to his TC to defend it. I've got some samurai over there being annoying. And I riskily start building a castle with that one 2 HP villager. But it would be out of Blue's line of sight. So all he has to do is walk a villager over there and attack my build. And that castle gets denied. Uh, but I'm pulling some villagers from my main base over there. So at this stage, I'm just going to focus on keeping Blue out of the game. Uh, it looks like um, Gerald and Matters are doing something on the other side of the map. Again, this bit here, I'm just going to take the view lock off me for a second. Um, and see what's going on over here. So Mattis has transitioned onto Conks, and they're starting to push this way. 
So here I'm doing a bit of macro at the moment. Blue's committing back onto that castle. I haven't noticed it quite in time. My, my samurai were right clicking the castle. I set them to right click the castle because if I didn't do that, they would probably walk into the town center. So I, I thought I'd just leave them there. Um, I still get a few villager kills with them. I'm not too worried about losing them at this point. They're just to be annoying. Just put a bit of pressure on blue so he can't gather, gather resources. Um, getting that castle up. The castle is in range of Blue's town center, I'm pretty sure. Because uh, I've got the Bodkin Arrow upgrade. Yep. And then I'm going to get a Siege Workshop because I want to get out a couple of Rams. Because Blue's got no units there, so I can just get I can just get a couple of Rams onto his TC. Uh, maybe onto his castle. Aaron Buy are terrible at killing Rams, so I've got, no, got nothing to worry about there. And then I'm going Imperial Age. So... Again, I probably need to get some gold mining upgrades to help my military production. Getting in forging. Still got my TCs running. Up to 100, 100 units, 82 villages, and a few fishing ships. See some pinging. I think that was Gerald saying that he was getting attacked. Yep, so Gray's got some, some units there. And I think I end up queuing some samurai down into his base just for a bit of defense. I'm getting the Yasama upgrade because I thought the Yasama towers are pretty awesome. I'd like to make some in this game. They're really good for putting, um, with your trebuchet push, you pop a couple of Yasama towers down there. Protects the trebuchets from units a little bit. Um, Yasama towers with um, the like guard tower and keep upgrades, they, they do quite a lot of damage for um, the amount of resources that they cost. I can see a blue monk just sitting there doing nothing. I think Blue, Blue's had so much to worry about this game, he hasn't really been able to efficiently micro his units. So I take out that monk with some samurai. Again, killing Blue's villagers, killing his town center. Still on just samurai production at this moment. I haven't really had much of a reason to make anything else at this point, but at some point in the game, I probably am gonna have to transition into something else. But again, I'm gonna to get to Imperial Age, queue up gold mining conscription, and getting a trebuchet out of my Ford Castle, and start putting some more pressure on blue. And while I'm doing that, I'm just, again, I send these samurai in, probably a bit wasteful, but I, again, I just wanna put pressure on blue. I think I was doing it because of the repair villages there, but the, the bloody sheep blocked my, my units. So they ended up taking a lot of fire from the castle and the TC, and I think I don't even end up getting one hit on the villagers. Yeah, I'm just gonna, while I'm treb pushing that, I'm just gonna take the view lock up again and see what's going on over here. So Matters has got conks onto Gray's eco. Gerald's just doing a castle creep across the map. They're putting pressure on Gray's economy over here, and Mitch is using his navy to pressure the buildings on the shore. Again, Gray's a bit distracted. He's got Manganel to try and kill the ships, and Mitch has just lost his castle to Trebs and he's starting to get pushed by Teal and Green. I think he was very concerned about the Chuko New and the Cavalier coming over. Uh, but I was like, yeah, I'm Treb and Blue, or I don't know, I was coming that I was pushing up the top. And then the other guys had units as well. So Mitch is going to lose his base. It was probably good. It was probably. So I'm just going to pause the game again. So each player has different strengths. Some players are better at taking pressure than others, and in 4 versus 4s, particularly on Nomad, usually when you're going into the game, you have an idea of what kind of role that you want to play, or each player wants to play. So in this one, Mitch was going to be like the Castle Age water player with long ships. So if he's getting pressured like by a castle drop or something like that in, in um, early castle aid, that's bad because he's probably not going to have the economy to stay on to go like into long ships but even though he's across the other side of the map he wasn't pressured early in castle age so it's actually fortunate for our strategy that he is the player over there because he's done his job for now he's won us water our fish eco is alive the other teams isn't and if he's the player going down, that's fine because he doesn't have any land army or any any sort of... It, it doesn't really matter that much that he's getting killed because it's the other three players that have got the, the land eco and the land military. Um, so that, for him being like the punching bag in late castle, early imperial, that really works out for us. Mitch is also good at coming back into the game after he gets killed. Probably not the fastest at rebooming, but... He's definitely faster than a lot of the other players in our group. Whereas if Matters was over in that spot and he was getting pressured, he's probably the slowest 
reboomer on our in our group and that would be bad for us because the conquistadors are quite a valuable unit in castle age um so without those units on the field we'd probably be doing a lot worse so it's good for him to be in a safe position to be able to execute the strategy that he wants to go for and again it's good that you know gerald isn't over there as well because um like we were able to sort of gang up on blue take him out of the game and get that advantage so we've got got two advantages at the moment we've won water and we've also neutralized one player already and even though i'm still focusing on killing his units we we have the advantage because we've we've sort of won those two points of the game even though we're losing a player's base now we're still ahead because of those points so i've upgraded to capped ram i'm getting in the upgrades on the infantry and i'm getting some halberdiers some pikes because i know that there's going to, I've seen the paladins on the field, I've seen the camels, I know that I'm going to have to be making some halberdiers. And the halves are also pretty good against low numbers of Arambai as well. So I'm housed at the moment, building a castle. I've got 116 bills, my eco is looking quite good, I'm top score on my team. And once again I'm forcing Blue to migrate his eco. He just, he can't get a break in this game, he's always been behind because of that early castle drop and we've just been able to continuously push him and prevent him from getting into the game. I'm just gonna keep Treb pushing him. And also I'm starting to make some skirmishes. Uh, the reason I started getting those is because skirms are probably one of the most effective units against Arambai. And here's my samurai group that I uh, queued into Gerald's base when I saw that he was being pushed and I'm just using them to take out some buildings. So again, I'm housed a little bit. I'm still continuing to get the upgrades on my on my infantry units, getting elite skirmisher. And I need to make some more houses. I forgot to get a couple of upgrades here. I don't have handcart for my farms and I don't have gold mining upgrade. I was very focused on making military. I definitely could have afforded to get those upgrades at this point in the game, but I just kind of forgot. That's what happens sometimes when you're so focused on what you're doing is you, you can forget your eco upgrades. I'm pretty good at remembering to do it. And as you can see, I've even got a mod that tells me what upgrades that I've got in my user interface at the top there with the green uh, bars under the different resources, but you're not always paying attention to those. Again, we're, we're winning the game, so I'm not too worried about it. So now I see the Persian, I'm up, I'm up to basically the, the um, perimeter of the Persian player's base. He's seeing that I'm a problem and he's starting to come back and defend rather than pushing forward. He's got pretty much fully upgraded paladins. I'm only on Castle Age Samurai. Now I know, okay, I need to get to the, the wonderful Japanese halberdiers in this game. Japanese halbs are the best anti-cavalry halbs in the game because of their faster attack speed, I think. Maybe the Bohemian ones are slightly better. May yeah, I think maybe Bohemian halbs are better. The Japanese probably number two. Um, and yeah, once I get those going uh, with some skirmishes, that should uh, be better than the Persian Paladin trash bow combination. Even though Paladins and trash bows are probably more population efficient, it's very easy for me to spam these trash units. I'm getting the two man saw upgrade because halbs and skirmishes both cost wood. So um, I probably it probably would have been better off. I would have been better off getting handcart and gold mining. Uh, well, actually, I didn't really need gold mining because I wasn't making that many gold units at this stage. So yeah, handcart probably would have been a better upgrade than the two man saw one. But again, I, I think I just forgot that I didn't have it. My pop's looking quite good. I'm at 185. I need to build a couple more houses. Queue those up there. I think that the villager that I used, I might have accidentally microed to make a farm after I built the houses. So those houses don't end up getting made. And then I'm going to start throwing some Yasama towers behind my push. While I do that, um, again, these paladins jump my units. Again, I don't have um, enough halves here. I, I think I lose both my trebs. Probably not doing the best job of protecting them at this stage. Um, but I'm not too worried. Like, you know, I'm getting the position. I'm just buying a bit of time to get up that tower. Um, I've got... I'm going to probably get pushed back a little bit here. But I've got, you know, four barracks halves coming out. I could probably end up, I could probably do a couple more barracks, I think. Um, pop the villagers in the tower. And yeah, just while that's going on, I'm just going to 
take because there's so much going on. I'm just going to have a look over here. So we've got Green doing a big Chuko new push with some backup skirms from the Malian player. He's only got Fletching. Um, and then we've got some Camels and Hussars and Jannies from Gerald with some Bombard Cannons in the back and just Mass Conks from Matters. So I think they were... The Chuko new were a bit of a problem, but they're pushing back over here at the moment. Mitch has lost his base, and he is starting to migrate his eco into our base over here. He's got a housing village over there. He's got a couple of town centers. He's got all of his ships over here, just sort of killing gray stuff. And again, I'm just starting to push forward. Again, the houses still weren't built at my base, so I'm just building them forward. I'm getting treadmill crane, because that's helpful for throwing up towers. Getting the arson upgrade, getting the armor for my skirms. Starting to make some more trebs. I, again, I probably I need a few more trebs at this stage. Because I end up getting stalled quite a bit at this castle. Blue's made it to Imperial Age. Um, but Grey is still in Castle Age. Uh, which is probably Grey's fault for not getting, not focusing on e economy in Imperial Age. I think he, he made quite a lot of Castle Age military. But, you know, as Malians, you should be able to get to Imp. And use that strong early Imperial Age of Malians to full effect, he, and that player probably has failed at doing that. Again, we're ahead in score. The Persian player has the highest score. The Chinese player score is slightly higher than mine. It looks like we're winning on that side, or at least it, there's a bit of a stalemate. I can see that Matters' ball of conks is in Gerald's base at the moment, and my samurai look to be in uh, Grey's eco. And now Blue's starting to make some Arambai again. Got some skirms there. Yeah, just have a quick look at what's going on. Still Chuko new. It's like a bit pretty even on that side. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm pushing over here. I'm just trying to treat, keep my trebs alive. Just keep the halves in front of the trebs. Ward the paladins away. And I'm using the skirms to pick off the trash bows. Got some more trebs in the queue. And it's just a matter of dancing in front of the the trebs here. The greys. Uh, sorry. Teal has committed a lot of villagers to repairing that castle, so he just keeps it keeps it up for such a long time. Again, I need some more trebs coming out. That they're, they're in the queue. They're coming out. It takes it's yeah. That castle should be down by now, but yeah, just needed that one extra treb to sort of out damage the villagers. Uh, Teal's playing both sides. He's got he's got quite a difficult role at the moment. He's got paladins on this side. It looks like he's got. I take the view lock off. He's got some units over here as well. He's having to kind of play both sides. Again, they're holding quite. They're holding back. They really need to probably be building some bombard towers or some castles forward here. And I've just got Samurai annoying uh, Grey Zico. I'm not even controlling those units. So I've got three trebs now. Teal's still doing a very good job at repairing, and I'm just getting the final upgrades on my skirms. And I want to look at getting the Japanese unique tech Katabruto to increase my treb firing rate at some point soon as well, when I'll remember to do it. I'm just queuing up the trash units, throwing them in at the trash bows, just so I can put some pressure on the repairing villages. And take that castle down. Blue's got some Arambai coming in, so I have to micro a few units away. I'm starting to get... I've got four trebs coming out now. I'm grabbing boardings just in case I get pushed back. Chemistry, final upgrade for my skirmishes. And that castle's going to go down in this volley. So there we go. I finally managed to take down that castle. Teal is into Hussar now. Again, it's a stalemate on the other side. It looks like they've got the massive units to push, but they just need some some probably forward defense, like some towers or some castles and some trebuchets for that bit of extra range. Sort of like what I'm doing here. There we go. I'm getting Katabruto. Queuing up the trash, see that Blue's got a lot of Arambai. Not worried about those at all. The skirmishes that I've got will mop the floor with them. And it looks like I'm I'm in on Teal. I'm, I've got, I'm, I'm in on his base, I'm in on his eco. He, I'm not seeing any more Paladins coming. Again, like even though they've got a lot of range units here, I'm building a castle right behind my trebs. So it's, they're not going to be able to push me back with those units. They really need Siege of their own. And now Mitch is coming over with some Berserkers to clean up some eco from Teal as well. And I'm starting to overtake. Um, I'm not quite over Teal's score yet, but I'm, I'm up with him. And they've got two players that are pretty much out of the game, Blue and 
we're grey, like we've, we've taken out their eco. And there we go, the GG is called. That, those guys were quite good sports, saying GG, saying well played. It was a... Uh, it wasn't an easy game. Like, it, it kind of looks easy from my point of view, because I had the, probably the easiest job. Um, but I also think I played my role well in that I, you know, built forward castles, I built forward towers, and I kept my position. I tech switched into the units when I needed to, and um, I just put two, we were putting pressure on them from both sides. So I was pushing up here, and it, it forced, so they were down a man because, like, blue was out of the game. Um, so he was able to get units on the field, but they weren't that effective. And it forced Teal... So, like, if Teal was here, they probably would have been able to win the fight because um, it's kind of like uh, two versus two. That's a big ball of Conquistadors, though. Um, but I think with the Paladins there, uh, Paladin and Chuko knew is probably stronger than what these players have here. Because I came in on this side... It, it forced Teal to split his attention and it allowed me to get a position on him because he just, he if he focuses fully on me, I think this side wins. Um, but if if I if I go here, it might be maybe a bit more of a difficult push. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, Hal, Halbs and Trebs with this army is also probably quite strong as well. Um, but again, you know, the solo push and the the two points of pressure on the top um, ended up working out quite well for us. And the TC spots, I think, favoured us a little bit because we had three we had three players over here, quite safe, um, were able to reinforce each other, able to put a lot of pressure on Blue, who had probably the unfortunate spot of being here. I think he probably TC'd a bit too close to the middle of the map. Uh, as I've said in earlier games, you kind of want to be um, on the outside here. 4v4s, it's a little bit different. It just totally depends. I've had a game where I was very close to the middle of the map and it was a fantastic position because I was Byzantine, so I was able to get up lots of castles and I was able to prevent the enemy team from sort of like coming coming through the middle to help each other and I was able to sort of duck and weave between different different castles and push various armies back get, and, and get to Imperial Age uh, with the Byzantine uh, discount and, you know, we won the game from that. It was a completely different game, but... Um, yeah, you can, you can get a good TC spot if you're closer to the middle. It just totally depends on where the enemy team is and where you are. I still think it's better to sort of be around this area on that sort of outer ring on the map. Um, but it's not like, it's not always the case because, you know, if the enemy team's here and you're here, I think it favors the enemy team because they can move inland to get to their eco. Um, so I'm just going to go and have a look at the statistics screen. So I've got the highest military score here, the most kills. I had a lot of unit losses, but I was just like throwing trash units in. And I took out a lot of buildings with my trebuchets. Um, Mattis had the most army. And it looks like Gerald got a conversion. Um, in the eco, the Persian player's eco was very strong. Um, Mattis got the most stone because he had a lot, a lot, made a lot of castles. Prob I think uh, he might have had maybe one more than me. And the Chinese player with the most gold, they were they sent they sent Gray a little bit of resources, and they're also um, they were slinging teal as well, probably to try and get more paladins out. Gel with the best castle age time, Blue had the best feudal time, um, but yeah, he ended up getting taken out in castle age, and the fastest in time was the Chinese player. I wasn't too far behind him, and I probably I, usually I. <coughs> end up re researching a lot of technologies. Um, obviously, I, I did a bit of a tech switch and I made multiple groups of units in this game. Um, highest villages with um, the Persian player, he probably deleted some towards the end. I probably had too much as a Japanese. Some Sometimes I end up over making villages a little bit and yeah, gray and blue, never able to get into the game with um, their bases getting taken out. So that's it for this replay. Hopefully that was fun. Did this completely unscripted. I've only got one screen, so I, I can't really afford to have like notes next to me or anything. I would probably like to do that at some stage because it's good to be able to plan talking points for replays because you can often forget things. But I think I've covered everything in this one because I've, I went through and I watched the replay back a couple of times and I picked up a couple of the, the things that I wanted to focus on. I think I've got it all. So thanks for watching, guys, and 
hopefully I'll have another couple of these um, in the next week or two.